huge disappointment this weekend for you, Zells, and every NFL fan that went to the Cape Town Convention Center. What a disaster. Yeah, no, it wasn't pretty. You didn't expect that question, did no, you? No, I didn't. I'm surprised <laughs> that we went that way, mate. You have surprised me again. Yeah, no, it wasn't, wasn't great. I've waited about, I don't know, 30 years for an NFL uh, event in South Africa, mm. and uh, it was pretty lame. Nice to see you got a hoodie on, though. Super Bowl. Got, still got me Super Bowls on. All right. Mm. So the one thing that didn't surprise us this weekend, that Romania got zero. I thought you were going to go in another direction there. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you tacked when I thought you were going to tick. <laughs> <laughs> zero. 76 nil to the Springboks. Uh, again, I didn't put it out there. I don't want to beat my chest, but uh, we were at my local, Carlisle's, up in Devil's Peak, Frederick. I was there with uh, my son, Ollie, uh, his girlfriend, Ali, my mm-hmm. daughters, Julia and Pike here, yeah? beautiful partner, Gillian. Monty and Dee were there, and several of Ollie's friends were there as well. And <laughs> they had a little pool going there. Put out your score. So I said to Ali, put a 73-8 down there. She won the pool. She won the cash. So Cashish. It was, yeah, she, cashish. She won it all. She wanted to give it to me. I said, no, you actually hold out the entry fee, and I just gave you the score. So my score there was 73-8, and they won 76 nil. And really, they should have won 176 nil. <laughs> In the comment section, gents, this oak, doesn't he put out like a Jack Nicholson vibes? Definitely like, uh, what was his name, man? Colonel Jessup. Few good men. Hey? Yeah. You definitely got that going Few on. Few people can't handle the truth here either. Can't handle the truth. Can't man. handle the truth, man. All right. The, okay. truth, the truth of this weekend. Truth is, great result for the box, obviously. I was impressed because they put out a circus team and they didn't concede a single point. That, that's what impressed me was like you got Fuff at Flav, you got Grant Williams on the win, and you got, was it Marco von Staden scrumming down? And they won 76 <laughs> 0. My God, this Romanian side wouldn't, wouldn't win a game in the Varsity Shield, let alone in the club leagues. Yeah. No, I mean, they, they, <laughs> they are not good. No, they were not good. They had some big units on the field, but they are. They're not, rugby's not their forte. Um, yeah, good result for the box, man. Everything that you could have asked them to do there, they got, they, they got the job done and no injuries. So. And then the best news that came afterwards <clears throat> was the announcement that Andre Pollard has honed his line-out skills and he will be coming to France. He's already in France and uh, 31 minutes. I don't know whenever I have tuned into a Leicester Tigers against Sale Sharks <laughs> Cup match on a Friday evening to see if that Oak was going to make it through. He made it through 31 minutes, introduced on 45. He kicked a conversion. He missed a conversion. He created two tries and then... Saw yellow. Saw yellow because the boys knew he had to get home to pack. So he missed his flight. <laughs> you want to miss get his him flight? off! How he got that yellow card was behind me. We'll talk about cards a bit later again. It's just been a disgrace of this World Cup, but it's a disgrace everywhere in rugby and like this contact, yeah. what constitutes contact. Yeah. But Andre Pollard... The worst kept secret, and we had it last week. We had it the minute Malcolm Marks went down. The minute anyone was going to go down in that box side, Andre Pollard was going to be called up. Yeah. And now guys who tell me, but Andre Pollard, oh, Marnie Labock. I'm saying stick Marnie at 10. When Andre is fit, play him at 12 or available. Play him on the bench as insurance policy. Shift Damon out to 13. You don't have to choose between one or the other. We don't have to sacrifice Marnie just yet. He adds a dimension. And Andre Pollard will give them the comfort that he can actually kick some goals. We saw again yesterday with Fuff, uh, Damien Willemse, he kicked some nice, nice, nice kicks. No pressure on him. Uh, Fuff is always going to be a hit and miss kicker. Mm-hmm. Just strange seeing Fuff in that 10 jersey. Yeah? Nice to have a guy there. I mean, like, in a way, it's a bit like, I suppose, Marnie Le Boc. He's, you know, can zip it down the line like that. It's lovely to see. But again, you're playing Romania. So that and the line out and, and, and looked great because we're playing guys that really weren't pushing us but tell me again uh, talking about the line out yeah. this technical nitpicking of a line out that some TMOs get involved in and some just don't care mm. of calling back a, a, a line out try you're talking, about, oh, you're talking about the mall the mall yeah and thanks for reminding me of that <laughs> uh, <laughs> that that's a World Cup final one TMO is, is happy that in real time it's a moment mm. and the other one wants to slow it down to super slow-mo and say they were marginally in front bring it back because mm. if you slow down every mall try to a point you would find a fault somewhere 
Yes. I, I think in rugby in general, if you slowed the game down enough, there would never be a try. Um, yeah, people are, you know, it's obviously quite quite a d- divisive issue, old mauling. Um, it's something that you could never take out of the game because any time a ball carrier is held up and people form up around him, it's going to be a maul. So you couldn't litigate against it or you couldn't sanction teams for, for being in a maul. Um, but you also don't want to have a situation where guys are getting away with, like, intentional uh, obstructive blocking because that that does take away from the game. So... I don't really feel like they've that they've got it wrong sufficiently to for it to be an issue to me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, in chapter two we'll discuss some more of that, Thanks, but let's man. just wrap up chapter one. Yeah, I thought I thought, um, I thought the terms would... "more" refer to a group of people bound together with ball in the air. Uh, no, so all I'm saying is, look. The the the, the refereeing around yes, the ball doesn't. Bother I don't me know too if much. I'd even watch beyond this point, eh? Hey? With the way you're yeah. explaining it, I know you've done your coach's clinic and your your coach's thing. But I don't really know what you want me to say about that mall situation. I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to express yourself, man. I'm expressing myself. Be yourself. I've uh, always asked you to be yourself. Yeah. Well, man, occasionally you ask me to be somebody else too. Okay, Ricky. What no, do you think there's of the no weekend? Ricky today. He's Give me the roll. He's stuck in traffic. Give me the so roll. So listen, <laughs> the mall is not an issue, man. I, I think generally, I think generally they get it right. Occasionally they miss things. Occasionally they ping things that probably weren't. Necessary, but I don't think it's a big issue. Yeah, I love your positivity, eh? I am positive about malls. Mm. I like malls. Okay. Malls are now, good. tell me, who got more out of the game against Romania, Ireland or South Africa? Um, I don't think anybody got anything out of that game. That's my answer. Ireland would have got nothing out of that because what do you? What can you really tell about how the box play in that, in that situation with four scrum offs on the field and an end? And South Africa, like I say, the mission was don't get injured. Bank the points, don't get injured. I was impressed with how composed and mature that performance was because I think it could have been really easy to just let your head down a bit and have a go. Uh, and people are going to think I'm taking the piss, but I'm being serious here. I thought Andre Estazen, in the context of that game, <laughs> played well because there were opportunities for him to really like showcase himself and he caught and passed and he just did the basics did, did the trolls get to you mate i, I really did I, the trolls get nice. to you it was nice in that game you've been defending your comments about i'm never the defending giant. it never defending it i'm just saying why did you single him out of everyone in that game because he was a guy who caught my eye he because the, the trolls got to you they said you dislike him how was damien very good eh damien Willemster. yes mate my guy hey eh? very good people think you don't like very him good. either very good yeah they don't know just how much you love this box team eh? yeah it's huh? true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you say they got nothing out of it. No, the spring box in the, no, outside of no injuries, and Ireland got nothing out of it. The key for me here is that Ireland picked pretty much their, their best 23 mm. to play against Romania, and we picked no 23. Mm. Two of those players, potentially. The, the, the side gets announced on Wednesday. I would be surprised. Bongi will start. I don't think anyone else in that pack will start. Dwayne. Dwayne will start, okay? So you Bongi, think Dwayne's going to start? Yeah, against Ireland. Really? Dwayne will start and Bongi. I, will, I would like him to start. I would like him to start, but he just played 80 minutes against Romania. Yeah, well, that was like a good hit out for him. <laughs> and then I think Kane and Moody will start. Against Ireland? Against Ireland, okay. Mate, how many of those Yagis did you have? Mate, that's... <laughs> a, are you not picking Kane and Moody now? Against Ireland. They've, they, so Jesse's their guy, okay? And they've started him in the big games. Are they now going to start... Canaan against Ireland at yeah. 13, outside no, Damien. No, at 14. Oh, mate. I'm saying there will be two of that. Oh, uh, sorry. Billy, okay, 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 I'm thinking outside centre. So three of the 15 oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, will yeah, actually yeah. start yes. against Ireland. Yes, yeah, sorry, man. And I thought you were talking outside centre. Nice, nice that you're back. Yeah, but back. three of the 15 will start against Ireland. That's what I think. I think yes. they will definitely start with Billy. Yes. I think they'll find a place for Kane and Moody. That you just have to. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and obviously, Bongi now is, is a guaranteed starter. Yeah. That the B slash C team could go out and put 76 points past Romania and concede zero is a very, very good statistic. Yes. If you look at our World Cup campaign so far, 52-16 against the Wales, 35-7 against New Zealand. Wales scored a try in the 78th minute against us. New Zealand scored a try late against us and was a breakaway try. Scotland couldn't score a try against us and Romania never looked like scoring a try against Mm. us. That, to me, has been so significant with this Bok campaign so far. And I, and I put those two matches in as part of their campaign. Yes. Uh, 
you know, I was critical of them in the rugby championship, egg on my face, because I should have had a little bit more insight and known that they were training these guys into the ground. They would be lethargic. Uh, they are peaking at the right, right time. Eh? Mm. And you know what? Jeez, what a game on Saturday night against Ireland. It's, it's gonna, this whole week's going to be environmentally friendly. It's going to be a green week, okay? Except the match day, mate. Uh, and we just don't know who's going to be wearing green. Let's hope it's us and them in the white because them in the in the green and us in the checkers outfit is going to be a clash in any case big time so it's going to be an incredible week of rugby it's built up this this game one in the world place two is worthy of a world cup final both teams have played particularly well in their two matches at the world cup and there's no escape from here once we see those teams play we're going to know that's how they play in the in the playoffs and that's how they going to approach the playoffs to try and get to the final and win it so we'll chat about that late in the week when we preview the games and tell you who's going to win because we never get it wrong uh, <laughs> yeah zells occasionally okay but uh, but not often i mean he got la rochelle to win the double <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> no one gave La Rochelle a chance to win Europe, and he, he said they would win it. They did it twice. So that's why I always go to him and ask him, off, off camera, ask him, like, what is going to be the score? And then I take it and I give it you up. You bet the opposite, so and you yeah, make lots of money. I, yeah, something. I'll never make the money, but I, yeah. it's unethical, mate, to Sorry. have such knowledge and then bet. <laughs> 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 With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> hey, Ricky, give me the rock. <laughs> so I think the box will take more out of this game, given that the second streamers could put in such a polished performance and they've got a week to rest their main guys. I also think they'll take a hell of a lot of the fact that Pollard is in the mix because yes. it just gives them that bit of comfort and it shuts up the... It shuts up everyone, the chorus of Marnie's goal kicking, Marnie's goal kicking. Marnie can just be allowed to play. Mm. Yes. I, w I wonder whether having no real uh, alternative to Marnie in the Bok camp has given him a sense of responsibility, but also comfort. It's not like there was a guy breathing down his neck on the bench. And I think Andre returning definitely changes that dynamic. So that's going to be interesting to see how they manage this process, because there are some people who are very pro Andre and some people who are very pro Marnie and how they integrate this guy. Like for me personally, you have to have somebody who's a great goal kicker on the field in a World Cup. Like I've said before, Andre is not a guy who's a proven great goal kicker. He's consistently going to kick at 75%. Whereas Marnie's a guy who's going to kick at 100% this week and at 50% next week. And in knockout rugby, that's obviously an issue. But to, to, what I'm saying is, how do they, how do they integrate Andre's return? Look, to me, they integrate it very, very easily. Uh, there's talk that he won't be in the 23 for Ireland. Mm. Look, I'm a kind of guy that he's been in that team for... Are you buying that, mate? I don't know. For, 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 for six years. So I would have him on the bench mm. against Ireland, without a doubt. Uh, he, would be, he would be on the bench for me, and he would provide cover for 10 and 12 and mm. the goal kicking, mm. and I'd integrate him into that match. Mm. Uh, and, and obviously, he's the go-to guy come the playoffs. Uh, so Maybe he's not on the bench because they're going to go 6-2, and they want a versatile cover the whole backline guy in Damien, and then you need a scrum off. Yeah, and then... The, and and whether they win or lose, they're still going to the playoffs and they've got to either play France or New Zealand. So it's mm. like, which one do you want? You know, mm. uh, He'll definitely start against Tonga. I'm just glad that he's there. They got through 31 minutes for, for Leicester. Mm. And, uh, and you know, obviously a massive blow losing Malcolm Marks. And we spoke <laughs> about that last week. Um, he, he's irreplaceable. He's the Jock Callis of our, of our Springbok squad. I mean, you just don't replace a guy like that. You just hope the next guy off the, the next cab off the rank can actually do a decent job for you. But uh, who has kind of elevated themselves to be a backup to Bongi. Is it Van Staden or is it uh, Dion Ferry? I mean, neither. Neither is the answer. You know, uh, I know got, neither is the answer, but who's going to who's going to be on the bench? Look, I think Dion will be the guy because he's closer to it and he's played more rugby at hooker. The idea that Marco Van Staden is a hooker, professional hooker, is ridiculous. I mean, Andre Pollard's best friend in primary school was a lock. You know, he can't cover Eben this weekend. So it's just not going to happen. Um, Dion but you see Marco on the bench for uh, against Ireland and Dion on the bench, so they've got options there. Yeah, look, they'll have a guy that they say is the guy, but the, the bottom line is when, they, when it gets to scrum time and it gets to a, a ferocious line-out where they're contesting, you're going to see the issues so, there. So Dion to throw the ball Did in. Did you see the first one that Dion, Dion threw? Dion to throw the ball in and Marco to scrum. I don't even know how you can get the ball to come out of your hands like that. <laughs> that, that, that is a skill. <laughs> like you, could, you could do that on America's Got Talent and people would clap. I don't know how you do that. So... I love Dion Free. Like, I really enjoy that oak. He's a great rugby player. But technically, 
the line out throwing is not really his shtick. And so, I, I, yeah, I, hope, I hope they can sort that out this week. I think Marco van Staden, from what I saw, looked like he was probably a more natural thrower of the ball. So, you know, chuck him in the back row and let him throw into the line I don't know. And the, our winners, can they chuck a ball in the line oh, It's worth a go, mate. It's worth the old go. days, eh? the old days when the winners used to kind of bowl it over. One arm. One Shh. arm into it. Okay, so comfortable. We've hammered uh, Romania. We were very good in beating Scotland. The guys will be buoyant going into this week. They should be buoyant. Yeah. So the reason that Romania looked better against Ireland than they did against the box is the Ireland play a very technical game. I'm not saying they're not physical, but they're a technical team. They'll cut you to pieces technically. They're very well oiled, well drilled, all that sort of crap. And so when you come up against a team that is, you know, not good like Romania, um, that is less exposed than a team that's built on pure physicality running at kids. Like, you know, you and I could be great touch rugby players. We play against the under 12s at the local primary school and we'd win and we'd win comfortably. But it wouldn't be the same as if we played contact against the under 12s because the physical mismatch would really be obvious in a rugby match. What, are they going to win or are we going to win? We, I think we'd win. We'd be sore the next day, though. <laughs> You'd have to lie down to put our underpants on. Depends on which under-12s you play. And I don't want to go out to Paul to play the under-12s. No, 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 mate. We stay a long way away from Paul. <laughs> <laughs> they would uh, get physical with us. Yeah, well, that we, we'll stick to touch yeah, rugby yeah, when yeah. we go out, take the N1 out to Paul. Looking at, uh, at the World Cup in a hole, what have your impressions been of the first fortnight? Can I be honest here, mate? I'd like you to be honest. Can I speak I, freely, mate? Yeah, and you can bring all your negativity. I don't no, mind. No, look, I, I love the celebration of rugby. Um, I feel like the gap between the best in the world and the not best in the world has shrunk, but it shrunk the wrong way. It's not because the middle teams have got better. It's because the quality of rugby in the world at the moment is a bit of a joke. <clears throat> and I think that's a great reflection on how this game has lost sight of the ball and is chasing all sorts of other stuff that's completely peripheral to the game and so it was great seeing Fiji beat Australia that's not because Fiji's got a lot better it's because Australia's got a lot worse I think we spoke about it in one of the first episodes there's two teams at the World Cup one team at the World Cup three teams at the World Cup you know um, outside of France South Africa and the team I'm not allowed to say um, Ireland the All Blacks mate they're going to be in the mix Oh, they'll As, get to the quarterfinals. Yeah. Aside from those teams, you know, Ireland will be technically good. I mean, look, maybe maybe they pull it together and uh, and win some playoff games. But I feel like generally, like outside of those three, four teams, there's not a lot going on. So it's, it's a patronizing. Do you know what I did enjoy? Do you know what I do enjoy? You take the middle teams out of the tournament. The Uruguays, like Uruguay are going to play Italy. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, these minnows are more value now because the IP of how to play rugby is out there. So teams are, are able to, to play a more structured game. And I think um, watching some of those minnows play each other is actually going to produce some good rugby. Is it patronizing to say, Chile, Chile were very gutsy. Chile were brave. They took 40, they conceded 40 points in successive games. You go to a World Cup, you conceded 40 points, everyone's raving about you. Portugal, 21, 28, a 20 point defeat against a Welsh C team. Now, everyone's raving about they played the better rugby and all that. I just find it so condescending. Very. But you, right, but you, right, you yeah. lose by 20 and everyone's raving about you. You lose yeah, by 30 yeah. and everyone's raving about yeah, you. Yeah. And then the big teams win by 70 and it's like, oh, well, they're that good. Mm. They're not really that good. Mm. It's because they shouldn't be playing each other. Mm. Spot on. Rugby is a honeypot for those kind of people, though. The, the hallmark folks love a good feel, a feel good story, you know? A patronizing, oh, well done for trying, champ. Better luck next time, slugger. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's embarrassing. It's terrible. <laughs> hey, Yo. it's messy, man. It's just not good, eh? It's not good. It's we not got good. this great. We got this great game on uh, on Saturday, Ireland against South Africa. But for the rest, it's really just a drab going into the playoffs. Eh? Yeah, and that's and listen. That's why the Fiji thing kind of woke me up a bit because that's exactly what this World Cup needs. Is somebody did, like Fiji physically dominated Australia? They punched him in the face. Enough of the negativity, mate. And uh, that'd be a smart ass, mate. And while I'm on the <laughs> mic, mate, some of those Fijians, <laughs> Tui Sova, mate, don't that be a guy smart that ass. came on for Botia it was just. Um, I thought it was Hilton Lovitz for a second. It was a man mountain that came on. 
One eight eight hundred and fifteen kilograms of just pure like destruction. Uh, okay, do you think the likes of Corabelli and those seven Fijians of so Fijian heritage? Yes. In the Australian side, Vili Vali. Do you think they deep down just thought yes? We're doing this. We're doing this for the. Do for, you think the they Gipa. thought this is a great day for Fijian rugby and for Fiji, and we're glad that we could contribute to it? <laughs> 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 I am not going to get caught up. <laughs> Accusing Corabetti of throwing that game for Fiji, mate. Um, but I mean, I'm sure their family weren't, uh, there were no uh, tears streaming down their cheeks. Yeah. You know? I don't think, think they could be a loser on this day. No, they were winners all the way around. But I mean, you, you, we both love Eddie's uh, antics and we yes. love Eddie uh, for what he brings to the game. But has he lost the plot? I think he's got the wrong trousers, you know. I think, I think he's just gone to the World Cup with guys. He's gambled on building a young team in a sort of um, crucible of fire there at the World Cup. And I think they're just going to get burnt. I just don't think he's got the guys. Um, as much as I like Flash Gordon, he's kind of learning on the job. Um, ben Donaldson will never play for Australia. I mean, ben Donaldson, mate. Come and their on. pack is just getting worse. Ben Donaldson, mate. I don't know. Should you not have taken a Quay Cooper, a Michael Hooper, and said, just try and get us to the quarters, maybe the semis, and from that we'll build? Because the, he may not be in the job after this Walker. Yeah, so I think, I mean, that was obviously definitely an option for him. I think that maybe they beat Fiji, right, if Quade's there, um, if Beal had been available, and if Hooper played. Maybe they, maybe they edge it, they squeak it, and they beat uh, Fiji. But I think, I think he... I think Eddie knows that this Australian team, no matter which way he dresses it up, is not winning this World Cup. And he's thinking maybe a bit long, longer term and saying, OK, so what do I do with this time to get us ready um, for what's coming? How do, how do I put us in a position to win a rugby championship in the next two years? And I think spending time mucking about with guys who are there on a swan song, he probably thought it's not worth it. I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm not in the mind of Eddie here. I'm just guessing. Maybe he has lost the plot. I don't know. But it just seems like if I look at that team and who they could have brought in, it's not like they've left left behind Franz Malhaber. It's not like they've left behind Eben Etzebeth, you know? The guys we're talking about are finesse tactical playmaking kind of guys. So hmm. Mm, Eddie. You know, he's 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 great for the media. He's uh, he's great for a for a headline, but a clickbait. But I, I also just feel that he's not really answering the questions because he doesn't know how to. So he's starting with, throw me with baguettes, mate. <laughs> Give, feed me a croissant, mate. Yeah, I got it wrong, mate. So everyone takes the piss and they laugh. But he's actually That's not, the point. Yeah. he's actually not saying, this is the eight we selected, this is the 10 we selected, this is the 15 we selected, and this is where I think we got it right or we got it wrong. So you can't actually, and I've, I've watched some of his press conferences, he's not engaging in any form of inquisition mm. because he just starts out by taking the piss. I don't think Eddie's going to sit at a press conference though and say, Raylene Castle destroyed Australian rugby and Dave and myself are rebuilding it from ground zero. I and mean, Dave Rennie must just be laughing, eh? Absolutely. I mean, that guy, as poor as his record was, 36%, okay? Eddie's now won one out of seven. Mate, 36 is great considering what he had. <laughs> Eddie's won one out of seven. Eh? Yeah. And that guy didn't play the likes of Georgia and, F and Fiji and that. He was playing the All Blacks, the Springboks, yeah. France, I love England, Dave. okay? So Dave... And they were competitive in a lot of those games. They beat the box back to back. Mm. And they beat them convincingly in that second test. Mm. Really played well to a couple of years ago. Now, to see that Australian side at 22-8, I was like, a better team in terms of, when I say better, mm. more cohesiveness, tactically more astute, mm. would have rolled Australia by 40 points yesterday. Mm. Mm. And this was their must-win game. Mm. But that's been missing from Australian rugby for some time now, right? Australia, since Eddie got involved with them, they became technically very good. But we spoke about these guys, Justin Harrison, Owen Finnegan, Jeremy Paul, whatever. You know, Rocky Elsom even. They used to have a few guys there who, you know, you had to respect physically. Rocky Elsom was a god when he went to Leinster. Yeah. So now, you look at Australian rugby now, the demise. We all know that it's not, you know, a top five sport there. But they're just, they're getting boys. They're not getting men. Like, where are the Oaks? Valentini stands up. Um, but where are the... Their, their, their great specimen, their great hero, of, their warrior, was 5'10", Michael, Michael Hooper. You know? Where, where are the guys? 
And I think that's got to change. And that is something you don't change overnight. That's that's a grassroots thing. Well, I mean, I I, I, I kind of want to take you on about that because I think Mark Looper's a fabulous player. He is a good player. And uh, he's there's, a, a, there's player. a two foot nine giant that's playing for France and wearing the number nine jersey. So are you saying that the guy must no. be st- like six foot nine? No, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is France have got some monsters in that pack. Okay. But their giant is a Napoleon. He's, he's, he's I'm, not, I'm not saying your best player can't be a, a smaller guy. What I'm saying is the Australian rugby, their, their, most, their toughest, most physical hero was, not, was, was a diminutive force. He wasn't. Did you see the size of his neck? <laughs> Mikey Hooper? Yeah. And that's like a staffy. I mean, no, but I'm they just, want to ban those kind of dogs. Okay, street fight between uh, Michael Hooper and anybody in the box starting I'm eight. telling you, Michael Hooper, if he gets you on the ground, he's going to pin you. You're not going to get him off. He's a bloody good rugby player, and he was treated no, poorly by a great rugby player. and he was treated poorly by Australia. It's not that he's not a good rugby player. Damien McKenzie's a great rugby player, but if he was the physical bastion of New Zealand but rugby, you'd be in trouble. I, 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 I'm going to take you on about this one because Mikey I think Hooper, you called the wrong one there. Mikey Hooper was not, is, is not a physically dominant player. Oh, the guys who played against him would he's beg to differ. He's a very good player. They would beg to he's differ, He's a very man. good player. That guy gets you in a neck roll, you're not getting up. Mate, yes or you no? said roll, you know, I don't eat carbs, man. Yes or no? No, 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 look, we're talking about me. Mike Hooper destroy me. Okay, I just wanted to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mike Hooper's a great player. He, he is a great player. Cup. He should be at the World Cup, should be leading Australia, okay? Mm. But enough of the Aussies. I mean, we don't really enough care. Enough of them, mate. We don't really care. We don't need them. Wasn't a we great like to see them lose. Mate, for the Aussies, they lost in the cricket. To South Africa, <laughs> we came from two 0 down in a five match series, and we won three yeah. two. Pump them at the bull ring um, by 122 runs, I think, and uh, we won comfortably. So a great win for the Pro Tears. Uh, we got an interesting email from uh, Ray Boner, Ray Boner, or Ray Bonza. I don't know, Ray Boner, and he's a South African who's been in New Zealand for four years, and he doesn't like the fact that we say mate, mate, mate. I mean, it's a bit of satire, but mate. We would say but, what but we don't say but in Cape Town, eh? Uh, the, the guys who say but are from the Eastern Cape, eh? Those, those, those English ducks, those privileged ducks from the Eastern Cape. Those white privileged ducks <laughs> <laughs> from Grahamstown. Can you imagine sending someone an email to but. say, listen, why are you saying mate so much? What, how, what do you get uh, out of that? But he loves the show. He loves you, Does eh? he? Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Good man, right? <laughs> he loves you, okay? <laughs> so we, we, say, we say but, we say bro, we say kaziburi. Uh, uh, what's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> we also say amigo. Yeah. Hey, hey, Ricky, you're coming out there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to give Ray no, a, bro, no, a no, cool no, message? No. no. Huh? No, not All right. Really. You, cause you, I mean, I know your wife can't stand Ricky Rodriguez. <laughs> She's had enough of Ricky Rodriguez, man. <laughs> so, uh, and coffee. Yeah, that as well. And yogurt. But your stars of the weekend, then. Stars of the weekend. Who stood up for you? I'll say this. It was great to see Makazoli doing his thing again. You know? I think that was, a, that was something we got out of that game. It's, look, Makazoli offers value. The Oak is in reasonable form. And he is a threat to score anytime he touches the ball. He's a great finisher. But at the moment, you just wouldn't pick him ahead of the other guys there. Kurt Lawrence, no. Kane and Moody. They're just better no. rugby players. Whose stock around. went down the most? Vili LaRue, mate. Not good. Philly LaRue stock will never go down, okay? Mate. Enough said. Mate. Billy the LaRue will be there when it matters <laughs> most. Chuckle. Even he started laughing at himself. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he was taking Romania way too seriously, mate. Just relax. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's talk about the All Blacks in Namibia. Let's quickly. talk about it, mate. Let's talk about it. Ethan de Groot. I didn't even think that was a penalty, let alone a red card. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, the ridiculous. guy went off with a dislocated shoulder and he's got a red card it's from it. It's ridiculous, man. Huh? It's ridiculous. And then the poor, in the Portugal game, why can Mani, someone tweeted, why can Mani do a no-look kick and the world's in orbit? The Portuguese act does a no-look kick and he gets a red card. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about the ball that is so magical? So if I'm running with the ball, okay, and you go down to tackle me and I run into you, into your head... Okay, bang. It's just play on. But if that, if if we freeze frame that and we Photoshop that ball out of my arms and we put it in your hands, somebody almost died. Somebody almost died. Get him off the field. There's Suspended. more damage done to those players at every breakdown. Have you seen some of those cleanouts on the lower back? 
Mate, did you see Rory, what was it Richie Arnold, whatever. One Richie of the, Arnold. Yeah, the tall bloke from the Wallabies, mate. Did you see him knock himself <laughs> out on that Fijian's hip? Go low for safety. <laughs> Oak was flailing. <laughs> Finished. And every engage on the contact of scrum, those front rowers, every they get knocked out basically mate, every time they go on. down. Every breakdown, it's a joke. It's an no, absolute joke. And the red cards are a joke. It eh? is a joke. And it's going to cost some team in a playoff game, and they're not going to laugh about it. We're laughing about it now. But how will Drakeby continues to just put their head in the sand and ignore just shocking officiating, but also just the absurdity of not understanding the game that it's a collision sport? Spot on. There's just no common sense there. Also, what is the goal? How safe is safe enough? It's never going to be safe enough because it's a collision sport. And as, uh, Your as, as, as Hanny Kamea always like to say, is ballet is a sport, a contact sport. But rugby is a collision. Yes, mate. You got that from the NFL. I like that. The way you that. came brought us all the way back around. I did. I, I quite enjoyed that. Very okay, clear. so uh, I've really felt for Tootsie. <laughs> really feel that much for Matty Proudfoot because that was the guy that left the Springboks and said he learned more from Eddie in a week than he learned with the Springboks in a year. Uh, we clearly saw he didn't learn that much. I was going to say. Because uh, he took Marty's out of a final and he's now with Namibia. And that, did you see that first scrum of the Namibians against New Zealand? Against that powder puff New Zealand pack. They rolled them by about 20, 20 meters. Nah, six meters, but... Felt like 20. It felt like 20. It looked like 20. And I just felt for Tutti. I mean, he was in Albany when they lost 57-0. And just to watch that Namibian side, our, our, and our condolences go out when I say condolences because we're LaRue La Milan, who say, plays for yeah. UCT, uh, see, uh, plays outside uh, old sax boy Davey Hayes. I don't know if he's ever going to play again when they see how that ankle looked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, uh, that's the political correctness of, that no one would even show the replay, the replay to see how it's been done. Uh, people were applauding that. Uh, but that's what I mean. Rugby has become a honeypot for that sort of like touchy feely virtue signaling BS disaster. So 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 head contact is lethal. You could give guys dementia, but we'll watch a slow mo replay of a guy taking a shot to the head for five minutes and debate it on live TV. But a guy breaks his leg, which nobody's campaigning for bringing an end to in rugby, and you can't watch the replay. It's not safe for your eyes. All right, what did you make of the All Blacks, man? Uh, again, difficult against you know weaker opposition. I, f- I do feel like the All Blacks are starting to pull it together a little bit. What against uh, Namibia? Again, weak but opposition. Namibia Romania would be a good game. I will say that yeah, it will be. That's the kind of games you got to watch at this World Cup. That kind of stuff. W- what did we see from the All Blacks that we that we haven't seen before? They look magnificent against no one. Yes. Uh, played with width. Took the ball through phases. Because they, it was an unopposed contact session. Yeah, what they did do was they chose the team they should have chosen, well, the backs, that they should have chosen against the box. That physical back line, I think, is the answer for them. It takes the pressure off that pack. Um, I think uh, Damo McKenzie, as much as I don't think he's necessarily a starting fly off, definitely added value. Obviously, more time and space against Namibia, but there was a bit of spark there. So you, you say Leicester must be picked ahead of Talia or Will Jordan, or would you pick Will Jordan in 15 and uh, Talia and Leicester on the wins? I, I just think that the, the All Blacks have got to make a concerted effort to add a physical edge to that back line. And whether they do that by playing Leicester at 12 or picking Caleb on the wing or featuring Will Jordan more in some of their play, I don't know. But there needs to be... The, 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 the backs need to start looking after themselves and that team because they can't rely on the forwards who are going backwards at times against bigger teams. So... All right, yeah. so we, we, we take nothing out of that All Black game. Uh, they'll beat Italy when they do play them probably by 15 or 20 points. They're going to either play South Africa or they're going to play uh, Ireland in the quarterfinal. And we'll see what they've got. Mm. I don't think it's much, uh, but that's going to be in, in three weeks' time. England, cruise past uh, Argentina, <laughs> cruise past uh, Japan, 34-12. Jeez. But when you say cruise, mate, with tatty sails and uh, just, I mean... Poor. No, it's just nothing in it. It's, what England are getting right is they're playing clever rugby. I'll give them that. So it's not pretty to watch, but they are playing relatively smart rugby. And Georgie Ford, Chopper's come to pick you up, mate. I believe so, mate. <laughs> You're on your way to the next show. When did you get the early pad for him, mate? <laughs> <laughs> it's Ray Bona, mate. He's come to get us. Come to get us. Sorry, but. Uh, <laughs> Buru? Yeah. <laughs> Buru? Cousin, bro. <laughs> I, uh, Mate. <laughs> matey, you're breaking my train of thought. Um, 
So, England, you said they're playing yeah, clever rugby. So look, I think Georgie Ford definitely adds a bit of brains to that team and that team can use it. And I mean, also some <laughs> great execution. Those cross kicks uh, to, to Freddie was great. Um, just having a guy who understands what to do at the right time makes a big difference. Does Farrell come back at 12? Mate, he may be back at quarter to 11. I don't know. But he's going he's gonna to add a lot of value there. But he's 12 and they keep Ford at 10 for the... And by default, Ford could be their key. Yeah. At 10. Yeah, I think they've, what they've done at this World Cup is shown that they, they, that they can put it together with Georgie Ford pulling the strings. And so I don't, you know, I don't think Farrell is a 12. I don't particularly like him there, but you can't, it can't hurt you. It's not like that. Well, I suppose you put Tui Lungi outside and then have Farrell at 12. I suppose you could do that. I just think they're onto something there and they mustn't mess with it now. So as much as I like to have Farrell back, they just need to think clearly around that because Farrell is not that hammer at 12 that's going to set a target and, and be the big physical straight runner. Uh, like Andre the Giant. Like Andre the Giant, mate. And he's also going to want to play a, a bit of a part in the tactical game. And like I say, Georgie, he's, this, he's got something going on there. So, yeah, I, I think having Owen Farrell back is, is definitely a plus. How they use him to the, to the benefit of the team remains a point of interest. All right. So we looked at the two weeks that we've had. They've all played two games. Uh, or have they all played two games? No, Samoa's played the one, eh? Scotland doesn't play again until November, mate. Oh, God, it doesn't <laughs> matter if they play or if they don't play. But the one against uh, Ireland's going to be good. Uh, still, our top three teams would be Ireland, South Africa, France. Mm. And we know there's always been a big breakdown between the French starting 23 and the next best. And yes. we saw in that game Jeez, against, uh, against Uruguay. There, there, there's a huge discrepancy. There's a huge Great discrepancy. Point. In Ireland's next best and their first best. And the one thing that we saw against Romania, there's not a massive discrepancy in our best and our second best. There is in certain certain key areas, but by and large, we've got a very strong 33 at the World Cup. And I think if you look at all the sides, would it be fair to say we have the most depth? Well, yeah, I, I would say yes, but I would also say what the Romania game showed was that we are a system-driven team. We are a team that plays to the system and stays in the system, and the system is very efficient. Whereas I think with France... Yes, there was a drop-off between the starters and the next guys, but that team is probably more driven by individuals and their specific contributions. I'm not saying they're not structured. They're very structured in their kicking game. I just think that it's more reliant on the people that are in there than necessarily the system, if that makes sense. And uh, if you looked at the weekend, mate, yes. who, who was your kind of player of the weekend? <sighs> Who really, I mean, Andre the Giant, you said you really loved the, you I caught like your the eye. He, yeah, I like the way he played. He, he was composed, man. I like that. He didn't get caught, caught up in that whole thing. I expected him to try and run away and score a million tries. He was just catching and passing. Kubis Reinach did that. Kubis Reinach did really well, yeah. <laughs> he just sped away and yeah, scored. Yeah, he was like, tried. forget you guys, I'm going to score. <laughs> I mean, I think he's our highest World Cup scorer and he's played against Canada and Romania. <laughs> <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> That'd be a great stat. That'd be a great stat. <laughs> but, and how's uh, the wheels on Grant Williams, eh? Yeah, I know that guy's... Eight, Cheesy he, moves. We're going to wrap this up by saying, we, I, I asked you earlier, who gained the most from that Bach performance. And that's where I want to wrap this up. Yes. Because you mentioned Grant Williams. Surely he leapfrogs everyone into that 23 as backup to Fuff because of the versatility and what he can cover. I thought Reiner is, was outstanding. He's a very good scrum off. Jaden is a very good scrum off. Mm. Fuff will always start in the big games. Mm. Did Grant Williams do himself favors Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yesterday. I think Grant Williams is a great guy to have on the bench when you, for impact. He's a great impact scrum off, right? Um, like you would never have Fareed Dupree on the bench because you'd be like, well, what is he going to do off the bench that he isn't going to do as a starter? And I think if you're looking for a physical defender at nine, then Fuff is the guy that starts. He knows the plan, he's experienced, fearless. Some may say crazy. So Grant Williams comes off the bench and he can, he can raise the tempo of the game and really like attack around the fringes, take advantage of guys who are a bit out of puff in the second half. Uh, I think there's massive value in that. But... So, for example, let's say Fuff gets injured and we're going into the quarterfinals now. I wouldn't say Grant is the next guy in to start. I think Grant has a role in the bomb squad. I think Jaden and then potentially Kerbis are guys who could fight for that nine jersey if Fuff wasn't around. So, absolutely, added massive value, very versatile, rapid. I mean, that is a point of difference. He is rapid. And um, great weapon to have on the box bench. Who starts? They, they announced in the side on, uh, on Tuesday night, South African time. Who starts? At 15, Vili or Damien? 
against Ireland. Who would I start or who will they start? Who will they start? They will start Vili LaRue. Who would you start? I would start Vili LaRue. You see, what is it about Damien that you don't like? I don't like him at fullback, <laughs> mate. Did you see how he stepped that, that kid broken to score that try under the poles? Beautiful. Close He's to the right. He's great there. in traffic, man. That guy needs to be right in where the bullets are flying. That's where he needs to be, not coasting at the back. I would start Damien Willems uh, against Ireland. At fullback? I would start him at fullback and I'd have Villiers in my insurance policy on the bench. Uh, Not a bad call. But I think they will go with the experience. Hmm. Um, it's going to be an amazing week build up. Ireland against the Springboks. And you know, someone said Ireland's not even a country in terms of their rugby team because they... Uh, so many foreigners. They, yeah, that's what the, the guy. The guy was trying to make up. They, they don't play as a unified island. Basically, um, they don't represent North and 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 South, but they do represent Australia, Tonga, and and New Zealand. And <laughs> thank God for Mick, Mac Hansen for Bundiake, uh, Bundiake, Bundiake, <laughs> and for James Lowe and the, and Gibson Park still got to come as well. So you got to give them credit, mate. The, the, the blokes they brought in are quality players. Quality players, mate. Well, that's what happens when you're bringing a Tongan, a Maori, and you bring in an Australian, an Australian, mate, Mackie Hansen. Hey, we never have made the Wallaby squad. It's too old. Hey, fast, great try that he scored against Tonga. And again, Tonga showing, doesn't matter who's in your backs. If you don't have a pack, you can't compete. Bingo. And uh, the fundamentals of rugby don't change. If you've got a pack, you tend to win more games. And if you've got a pack with a very good halfback pairing, either a nine and 10, or ideally a nine and 10, you're gonna win, you're gonna win a lot of rugby games. We enjoyed watching the box against Romania. We knew it would be a 10 to 12 try fest. They got the 12 tries. Uh, Damien Willems got some good goal kicking practice. Fuff got a run out at 10. Markov and Stard and Dion Ferri, they felt what, what it was like to play hooker again. But the real business for the box starts on Saturday night when they play Ireland. One plays two. Then they've got the Tongan game and then it's into the playoffs. It will be either France or New Zealand. I'm telling you now, our box team I took a body blow when Malcolm Marks went down, but they're still primed to do the business. I just need Bongi to stay fit, to stay healthy, because if Bongi had to go down, we Ouch. could be in a little bit of trouble. A lot of trouble.